welcome to Webinar Wednesday. So as always, you guys are so good at this. You're already hopping in the chat saying hello. Hey, Robert. Hey, Brenda, Jeff, Richard, Teresa, Lori, Teresa, two Teresas. Wow, lucky day. Welcome to you all. Um, so I, I have a couple things that I'm going to try today that are a little bit different. I'm going to try a poll. Um, so let me see uh, if you can get into it. I'll start with housekeeping and then we will jump in and you can let me know uh, the answer to the question I'll be posing at the start. So hello and welcome to the webinar. Today we will be talking about the book that you did not know that you wrote. Shocking, I know. Um, so if you don't know, I am Chelsea, I am with Flulu um, and a few housekeeping things to get started. So I see that several of you have already found the chat. So thank you so much. Um, yeah, let us know where you're from. A few of you have done that already. So we've got Utah and Florida in the house. Uh, so thank you so much for popping in the chat. But let us know where you're from. Let us know what you're working on. Uh, and if you have any questions, we have a Q&A tab uh, as well. So if you have questions, drop them in the Q&A tab. I will save some time to get through those at the end of the presentation. So drop them in there if you have anything that I don't cover or if you'd like some clarification. Oh, we got PA in the house. What's up? Hey, Dave. Hey, Teresa. Oh, Colum or Columbia. <laughs> Canada. Exciting. All right. So I'm going to see if I can start this poll and I will let you answer uh as we go through so i'm just gonna leave it up the question is have you published a book so hopefully pretty straightforward we've got yes we've got not yet but hopefully soon we've got i would like to publish a book but i'm not sure what to write and then we've got i think i'm in the wrong webinar so just trying to sift through anyone who felt like they were going to be learning about i don't know uh, spreadsheets or google something today we're here to talk about books and content that you have and how to turn it into a book so hey thank you guys for hopping in this is fun right fun poll. Okay, so I'll leave that up for a little while. Um, I'll check in maybe about halfway through if I remember, <laughs> or at the end, and we'll see uh, what kind of mix we have in the in the audience today. So thanks so much for playing along with me. All right, so the main event, the book that you didn't know that you wrote, we're going to get into it. But first, as always, I'll start with a little bit of information about Lulu. So if you don't know who Lulu is, I am not Lulu. Lulu is a company, but it's also a real word. So Lulu is a remarkable person, object, or idea. It's not just leggings or hot sauce, uh, unfortunately, or fortunately for all of us, I guess. Uh, so we were founded in 2002 by Bob Young. Our publishing platform is free to use. We published over 3 million books and paid out over $117 million in author revenue. So if you are in that group that has not published yet, or maybe you're working on your next project, it's time to get in on some of that sweet, sweet cash. All right, so our mission is Lulu is dedicated to making the world a better place, one book at its time, their sustainable practices, innovative print on demand products, and a commitment to excellent service. All right, I always like to mention this if you come to any of our webinars, and you could probably <laughs> go through word by word the first slide and the second slide, but I love sharing this fact. We are a certified B Corp. Very excited to be part of the B Corp community, to be part of a movement that is trying to do good for the planet and the folks that are inhabiting it. So B Corps are for-profit companies that are certified by the nonprofit B Lab to meet standards of social and environmental performance, accountability, and transparency. So the little pitch is the holidays are upon us almost. Spooky season is just around the corner for a lot of us, especially at Lulu, it's already started. We love fall, so excited to see that. But if you are looking for a way to spend your dollars in maybe a more sustainable or ethical way, check out the B Corp community. They are a great group. All right, so this is me. I am Chelsea Bennett. Uh, I am Lulu's brand engagement manager. Um, that title is changing slightly to education and community manager, but I didn't have time to update this slide. So let's all just pretend we're in the past. Uh, this is my cat, Batman, who will not be making an appearance today, unfortunately. All right, so we're here to talk about the book that you didn't know that you wrote. So what do we mean by that? And why would you wanna turn it into a book? If you haven't written it yet or you haven't done anything with this content you're creating, why a book? So if you find yourself in that content creator space or you are a professional or you know maybe you're someone who's just writing regularly, whether it be blog posts or articles, there's a lot of content out there that you can compile into a book and you don't have to start from scratch or remake the wheel. So I wanted to start today by just talking about if you're not, um, you know, sold on the idea of books yet, why would you think about creating a book to help grow your brand and your business? 
So first up is versatility. So books are incredibly versatile. I know that whenever you think about books, you may think of like, oh, you know, I don't have an epic trilogy to write or I don't have my sci-fi fantasy novel really pinned down or mapped out yet. And that's okay. Books can take so many different formats that it's really exciting when you start thinking about the content you have and when you are able to see how many avenues are available to you to create some print collateral to support that content in your business. So on this slide, I, I, I kind of like to say these are some of my favorite books, but that's sort of a misnomer. I mean, we've published over 3 million books. How could I choose? Obviously, there is no keynote slide large enough <laughs> to hold all of the goodness that we can create at Lulu, that we can help you create. But here are a few uh, that I think kind of show a good scope of what you can do with your content. So I'm just going to bang through this really quickly. So How My Ancestors Drink Whiskey is a novel, so your traditional story about ancestors and kind of going through your past. So we'll start there, sort of your traditional six by nine paperback. Beside that, we've got Today is the Day. This is a series of planners uh, that a Lulu author will create every year. Does a same interior file, but will change the, um, the covers to have a ton of different designs. Um, and she makes some really, really beautiful content. But she has one interior file and then just changes it up based on what her fans like, you know, what aesthetics they're after, what's trending. Um, so that's a really interesting business line for her. Uh, West Virginia Wasteland Bestiary. This is this is one of my favorites. They're all my favorites, of course. Uh, but I love this one. This is like a post-apocalyptic West Virginia uh, and some some folks who go through a journey through that land and the creatures that they come across. So it's really fun. Um, below that, F This I'm Coloring, a very adult coloring book <laughs> to the side. <laughs> and then let's go to children's book right beside that. Maybe I should have rearranged this a little bit better. But <laughs> A is for Aperdue is a really adorable children's book book. Um, it's a square, as you can see, square paperback. So we love that format as well. Right above that is a photo book um, that commemorates New York punk. Above that, Tiny Home, Big Flavor. So Justin and Juby are content creators that lived in a van for a little while, and they just kind of created this way of cooking um, and, and very sustainable and vegan, fresh ingredients, and they decided to share that. They also made a playlist to go with their books, so kind of another fun way to build on the content. Um, so that's a great one. We also did a webinar with them and how they created this cookbook, if you're interested in that. Above that, The Secret Life of Speaking Up. So this is a really fun one. It's a very tiny uh, format. It's, I think it's a, our digest or perhaps pocketbook size. So it'll fit in your pocket or your pocketbook. Uh, so this one is just a lot of little challenges that if you are trying to um, step out of your box more, get out of your comfort zone a little bit and add that zest of the unknown, then The Secret Life of Speaking Up is a really fun way to do that. Uh, the author filled this book with just different challenges as you go throughout your day to find your voice and be more ad adventurous as you kind of go about your day to day. Right beside that, another one of my favorite coloring books, Big Belly Merbabes. It's a body positivity coloring book. I love this one. I think this is just such a fun concept. Under that, you must be this tall to exit the park. So there was a Twitter account. Uh, it was called at uh, fake theme parks, I think is what it is. Yeah, at fake theme parks by Jason Ginsburg. And he kind of just tweeted in the voice of a theme park worker, which if you've ever <laughs> had that as a job, I'm sure you can only imagine the things that you come across on the day to day. So he compiled all those tweets into a book. So I thought that was a good example to share here. The nutrition code, obviously about food and nutrition. Uh, beside that, I have a little bit more about Tika in a later slide, but this is a calendar uh, for our, some pet influencers that use Lulu. Um, above that, When We See Ourselves is a wonderful compilation of stories of Black and South Asian individuals who are just sharing uh, how they overcome racism and things like that through the power of love. So we love to see that as well. And then above that, 52 Weeks of Awesome Leadership. So a little guide that you can use to walk through your business life and just try to become a better leader for you and your company. So that was really quick and dirty. But what you can see here is we have hardcover, we have paperback, we have calendars, we have coil bound, uh, comic books, photo books, cookbooks. So we really, really run the gamut. So I would love to, if by the end of this presentation, you are not sure how your content can become a book, let's workshop. We can figure it out. All right. So why books? I showed you the versatility, so there are so many options there that are outside of just the novel, if you will. But how can you use them to grow your brand and your community? So once you have a book, there are so many opportunities for you to leverage that book to grow your brand and reach new audiences. How can you do that? Well, a book establishes credibility or it helps you build credibility. So 
I like to give the example of, you know, if you have the book published, maybe you're going for a speaking engagement, you're trying to get an interview on a podcast, you're trying to get sponsored for something. If you're able to bring your expertise and knowledge and compile it into a really well done book, that really helps you build credibility. You can approach people and say, I literally wrote the book on blank. So this is a great way for you to help establish yourself as an authority and a leader in your field. You wrote the book on it. So you can go to people and say, I know this topic inside and now I've written the book on it. You can check this out here. And it's a great way to help establish yourself in that field. You can also establish expertise. So once you start having a repertoire of different books um, that speak to your topics and the knowledge that you have that's unique to you and the way that you're able to communicate it, you really start being able to carve out your own lane for that genre or um, that topic, whether you know you may be fiction or nonfiction. Once you start kind of building your roster of books and publications, then you really start to stand out in your field. You can also diversify your portfolio. So you could be, maybe you're a photographer. And so you have these beautiful photographs that you're selling and maybe they're very expensive or maybe you know all of your fans and followers can't really interact with your brand on that level or buy those, those photographs or those paintings or those canvases. One great way to diversify your portfolio would be to make a wonderful calendar or make a photo book. We had an example of that on the last slide. But there are so many ways that you can offer up this content in different formats so that your audience, regardless of their price point or kind of where they're at financially, how much disposable income they have, maybe they can support you on another level. You can also create lead magnets. So if you have a product or service that you're trying to sell, giving away your book for free is a great way to, again, establish expertise, let people know, hey, I'm a credible source in this industry. I know what I'm talking about. Here's my free book that you can download or you can have hard copies as well. And then at the end, maybe there's a call to action. It's like, hey, if you have questions about this content, book a session with me, um, you, you know, buy my product. Now that you know, I know what I'm talking about. I'm invested in this. So it can be a really great lead magnet. Books can also generate passive income. So with Lulu, when, once you publish your book, and I mean, with books in general, so regardless of what path you go with for publication, creating print collateral and creating a book allows you to have something that you create one time and then you can sell it 24 hours a day. That book is available through your own website or through third party sellers such as Lulu or Amazon. So you can have that available to make passive income and support your other business lines. Again, leverage for opportunities. So I did mention this at the beginning of this slide. We'll get more into it here. So again, once you have your book, going out for speaking engagements and being able to say, I'm an expert in my field, check out my book, is a really great way to dive, uh, sorry, differentiate yourself from the crowd or from other people that may be buying for that opportunity as well. You can also do interviews on your topic of expertise. So using your book to find different YouTube channels, podcasts, blogs, blogs that would be interested in hosting you and your content that are obviously very relevant to you and your audience can be a great way to get more exposure. Podcast series, start your own podcast. What is your book about? Maybe your book is about how to overcome anxiety and grow your brand or, or you know, grow your social media accounts. That can really lend itself well to a podcast or a YouTube series where you kind of break down each chapter and maybe you do a, a short run. So, I mean, sometimes you think of podcasts or YouTube channels and this is just something that you'll work on forever, but maybe you decide going into it, this is a series. I'll do this for six months. I will go through every chapter of my book, expand on it, maybe bring in other experts in the field so you can have that dialogue and conversation. And it's just a great launch pad for that. Webinars. You're in one right now. That's what I'm doing here. You could do this too. <laughs> so hosting a webinar that again, could be a, an overview of your content. It could be a series that kind of delves more deeply into the content that you're talking about. It could be, hey, I wrote the book on how to sleep better. Now I'm wondering how to have a really great morning routine. So that's what I'm gonna be talking about now. So using that as a building block to kind of even look for your next topic or opportunity. Online courses. So this is very popular now as well. So you create an online course. Uh, Lulu, we just went through our first one earlier in this year and we created a workbook that went with it. So creating an online course based on your book that can also turn into a cycle of you creating a workbook that goes with it. So again, giving you more opportunities to diversify your revenue and your portfolio. As I mentioned with our diversify your portfolio example, this also will give your fans an opportunity to support you in a different way. So for the example I was talking about earlier with Justin and Juby, 
they made a cookbook. They had they had a really healthy Instagram following, people who wanted to see their van life adventures. So then they made a cookbook because they noticed that the content that they posted about the food they were making on the road was getting a lot of traction. So, you know, for Justin and Juby, maybe you don't have Instagram, maybe you don't want to interact with them on that platform, whatever. You can go to their website and buy this cookbook and kind of come along for the ride. So it just kind of gives you an opportunity to meet your audience where they are. You know, not everyone is going to be trying to, you know, book you for a consulting session or buy your box set of books that you may have or, you know, whatever else you may be offering. So providing more opportunities for you to connect with your audience and meet them where they are is always a great idea. All right. So that's why you may want to use books to grow your brand and use the content you already have to compile it into some format of printed collateral. But how do you make it successful? So on this next slide, we're going to talk about some of the key ingredients to successful publishing. So actually, let's take a look at our poll. All right. So we've got, oh, the majority of you have uh, have published a book. That's exciting. Uh, not yet, but hopefully soon at 37%. And I would like to publish a book, but I'm not sure what to write about at 8%. So this is great. Okay, so very exciting. So if you have not published yet and you do want to publish, but you're not sure what you're going to write about, hopefully as we go through, you'll get some ideas of the content that you already have on hand. And if you have not published, we're going to get into how to make sure that you publish successfully. Um, and if you have published already, well, maybe you've done all these things and drop your own pointers in the chat if there's anything else that you found was really valuable to you. All right, so what's in it for me? <laughs> I looked up skeptical animal to find a picture for this slide, and I felt like the internet really, really came through on this one. I don't know how you could find a more skeptical looking uh, dog than that. That's uh, <laughs> He's not convinced at all. Hopefully he will be after this slide. All right, so what's in it for me? So as you're writing your book, that's really what you need to be thinking, not for you as the author, but for your readers. That's why they're going to want to buy your book, regardless if you're, if you're writing fiction or nonfiction or making a calendar or magazine or comic book. Your reader has to feel like they're getting something of value out of it before they make that purchase or even start that journey to, to buy your book. So you want to understand what your book has to benefit your readers. Uh, I'm sorry, what benefits your book is bringing to your readers. So if you aren't sure what that is yet, if you're unclear on what you're offering, this positioning statement can be very helpful. So the statement is, my book will help audience to benefit by method. So audience benefit and method are what you will want to um, fill in for your specific book or project. And I have an example here. Um, so my book will help Bigfoot hunters, that's my audience, find the best places for Bigfoot spotting in North Carolina, that's the benefit, by compiling data on the most popular locations for each North Carolina sighting. So if my book is about Bigfoot hotspots in North Carolina, and I'm not really sure how or what my method is, you know, who, who is my audience? How will I get them to understand the benefit they'll get from this book? Well, here it is. So my audience is Bigfoot hunters. So who cares how to find where Bigfoot is in North Carolina? Well, people who are Bigfoot hunters, right? So that's my audience. They're going to benefit from my book because they're going to be able to see data on where the most sightings occur. So where are, you know, where is Bigfoot hanging out in North Carolina? Where are people spotting him the most? So by compiling the data and the information that kind of backs up each of these points, maybe I could rank them. Maybe I give an analysis of how legitimate the reportings are of these sightings. This uh, statement, once you can fill it out, is really going to give you those indicators of who your book is for and how it's going to benefit them. And once you have those two pieces, then you're really on the right path to finding your audience, being able to market to them, being able to reach to them, reach them, and then being able to communicate clearly why they should buy your book. So now that I have this filled out, I can go to a conference for people who look for uh, cryptids or whatever and say, hey, this book is what you're going to want because I'm telling you exactly where to go in North Carolina. I have a ranked everywhere. I'm using photos if I've got them. I'm using testimonials. I'm giving you the trail path to take for your best spot or your best shot at, uh, at spotting our furry, furry friend. Um, all right. So Filling out that sentence is a really great way to get started on who your book will benefit and understanding that for your project. If you want more information on how to position your book, we did do a YouTube video on, um, I think it's just called how to position your book in the market. So pretty straightforward. Check that out if you want more information on how to get clear on that for your book. But essentially, you just need to ask yourself, what problem is your book solving for the reader? You know, even if you're writing a fiction book, are they going to feel 
happy after reading it? Are they going to be scared? Are you writing a thriller? Are you trying to, you know, kind of go some psychological dark place that maybe they haven't gone yet, that people who love those books will really enjoy? So find out what problem your book is solving for your reader. And that'll help you kind of set yourself up for success as you continue your marketing and turning your content into a book. Another thing to remember, details matter. The devil's in the details, right? We all hear that all the time. So editing, formatting, and design are so incredibly important. We have so much content around cover design, formatting, and editing your books. We also have a, a partners page, so lulu.com slash partners, if you do want to pay someone to do these things for you. But I like to say nowadays, it's really not about self-publishing versus traditional publishing. It's about successful publishing or professional publishing versus unprofessional publishing. It doesn't matter if you're traditionally published or independently published or self-published. If your book looks bad, it can come out poorly through any of those channels. I mean, it, we've all seen books that were traditionally published where the cover wasn't great or you're going to find a misspelling. That's going to happen regardless. But you as the author, especially if you are self-publishing or independently publishing, you have to know the markers of a great book and what makes a book successful and makes it high quality. So using a great publishing partner like Lulu will take care of you there. But before it gets to that point where you have the book in your hands, you have to make sure it's edited and formatted and designed really well. So if you're not sure what that might look like, or even if you want to hire people to do these jobs for you, you need to know and be educated on what you're looking for. You don't want to just send off some files and when they come back, you think, well, I guess they did it right. You want to know what does good formatting look like? Your favorite books, how are they formatted? Take note of those things. Your favorite uh, book covers in your genre, what do they look like? Why do you like them? Why don't you? All the things like that are very important and really help you create a really successful and beautifully published book. Another thing to remember here, if you want your book to be successful, if you want it to be a tool that you can use to grow your brand, you have to remember your book is an extension of your brand. So it should reflect the same qualities and content ideas that make you a successful content creator. So whatever your content is that you find successful for you, that you feel your followers and fans are coming to you for regularly, you want to make sure that you're mirroring that in your book. And I'm not saying that you have to be kind of boxed into what you talk about or what you write about, but seeing what your followers and fans or what's been successful for you in the past that is a great indicator that that's content that your audience is looking for and that they will support you in the publication of that content. All right. So what kind of books have I already, already written? So let's cash in on this promise we made in the, in the beginning that you've already written a book and you just didn't know it yet. So let's find out what it is. All kinds. You've written all kinds of books. So you probably have all the content you need. That's the crux of this presentation is just showing you that you probably have the content you need or the ideas to get started and create an awesome book. So looking at collections of top performing blog posts, articles, or social posts. So I gave some examples of this in, in my first slide on the versatility of books. But there is, you know, a couple of those. One, Tika the Iggy, which I'll talk about more in a minute. That's a, an, an Instagram influencer that put their pictures into a calendar. We also did the theme park, the fake theme park Instagram account or Twitter account that was really popular. They basically just expanded on those really popular tweets and put them all into a book. So those are examples of the content that you've already have, or you've already published or you already have that's performed really well. I'd also like to say if you are thinking, well, okay, this is kind of a good idea, but I don't really have any content that I've published yet or I don't know. We'll start. I mean, that's how you start, right? I mean, start by publishing a blog post once a week or once a month or whatever cadence is going to work for you. Maybe publish some articles, you know, whatever you can do. Start by publishing on your social media channels and see what's getting traction. And if there's some some life and longevity there in publishing that content into a book. Photos and artwork. So I always love when we see really beautiful photo books or artwork at Lulu. That's always very exciting. We have so many so talented photographers that use Lulu, whether they're making beautiful coffee table books or calendars. This time at Lulu, this kind of pre-holiday holiday time is one of the most exciting times because we start to see all these people who, you know, have all, this, all these photographs and artwork and want to put them together in a magazine and a calendar um, in a photo book for friends and family. And so those are always really exciting to see. So that's a great way to repurpose some of that content and give your fans and followers in their way to support you workbooks to support online classes. As I mentioned, we did that for our own class and I did get some really good feedback about how the people that took the class were able to benefit from having that workbook in tandem with the online course. Um, so another great option there. 
manuals to accompany your products or services. So maybe you already have a product and service that's available. And what if you just made a short manual? You know, it doesn't have to be 100 pages. It could be less than that. Um, but a short manual that walks your, your um, audience through how they can best use your products and services, how they can prepare to work with you, how, what they should do once the consultation or, you know, once they have the product, how do they use it? So another good opportunity there and another way to think about it. So it doesn't have to be like you're waxing poetic about like what your fifth grade year was like. It can be, hey, here's how to use my software. It could be that. All right. So calendars, as I mentioned, another great one. Cookbooks. I love to see cookbooks come out. I mean, again, for we have a great uh, a group of influencers who will do this um, and uh, or people who are working in nutrition and dieting. That's great as well. Low and no content publishing. So we did a webinar on this as well. And I think we also have, um, we do have a YouTube on our Lulu University channel, a video about low and no content publishing. It's exactly like what it sounds. So low and no content publishing could be planners or journals or notebooks. Um, I gave an example of a planner in the beginning where this author every year will upload uh, the same interior file for planners and fun fact, if a low or no content publishing is right for you, Lulu provides interior files for blank, lined, dot grid, as well as some different planner templates that you can find. I think if you just go to our notebooks page on our product, um, under the products tab, then you can see these free templates. So after you have it downloaded, you just have to create the cover and you can use the same interior, create multiple covers that have your brand front and center, um, that have maybe a theme that you talk about in your books. Maybe it's an intentionality journal. Maybe it's a gratitude journal, a food journal, whatever. Um, so those are some really good options as well. If you do want to publish and you kind of, you know, aren't ready to kind of pin the next great American or national, international novel, low or no content publishing can be a good way to kind of get a feel for it. Don't act like you're not impressed. That's a lot of opportunities for you. Okay. All right. So if you know, okay, great. Like I have the content, maybe I, I'm kind of piecing together what I can make. I understand that a book is in my future, but I wanted to include a little section in here just about how will you sell your books? You can start thinking about that because that will kind of help you understand the right path for you um, and help you answer some questions in the beginning that are very important to, to kind of get out there as you're starting the book, as you're creating the format and the trim size. So at Lulu, we have several different ways for you to sell your book. But if you want to use your book as an, as an extension of your brand, as an opportunity to grow your brand um, and get more information about your customers, your readers, um, just your business in general, Lulu Direct is a great way to do it. So at, with Lulu Direct, you can sell your book directly through your own website. Um, and we've got, if you go to lulu.com slash sell, slash sell on your site, it's right here. We have integrations with Lulu Direct and Shopify and then WooCommerce as well. So WooCommerce plays really nice with WordPress websites. Shopify obviously powers several other sites. So depending on what kind of website or builder you use, um, then we can definitely help you there. So a couple of reasons why you may want to sell direct to use your book to grow your brand. This is really important for anyone who kind of has an eye towards publishing to grow their audience or grow their brand. Um, the, the print fulfillment is automated. So of course, Lulu's print on demand, that's going to be across the board. Always the, the print fulfillment will be automated. So you sell these directly through your website and you don't have to do a packing party or, uh, you know, <laughs> behind the books yourself. We're going to take care of that. The orders come through your website. We automate the print fulfillment and send them to your customer. You keep 100% of your revenue. So this is super exciting, of course, but since you're selling directly and you're cutting out the middleman, you're keeping all of that revenue. Um, so everything that you are selling the book for outside of the manufacturing cost that goes back to you and your business. So that's obviously a plus you get to retain your customer data. So this is so valuable these days, especially if you're trying to grow your business um, for any. I mean, honestly, any size business is just huge, but getting customer data is so valuable because you can see who bought your book. You can see their email address. You can grow your email list. You can communicate with them and start building relationships that are going to be long-term and not just transaction-based. So if you sell your books right now through Amazon, or even if you have them sold, selling through just Lulu.com's bookstore, you can see that you're selling, but you can't see who bought the book. So that's a huge, uh, a, a huge opportunity for you once you're able to see who is actually buying your book. I mean, you may decide to go to an event or sponsor an event and sell your book, or you may decide to run some ads on your favorite social media platform. 
When you're able to see customer data, you can see if those ad dollars or that marketing effort that you made was worth it. Because you can see if your sales went up, you can see who bought the book, you can contact them and say, hey, how did you hear about me? Could you give me a review? The opportunities are really endless when you can connect directly with your readers, which is what Lulu Direct gives you the opportunity to do. Um, so no inventory management. Obviously, if it's automated, if we're automating the print and fulfillment and it's print on demand, you never have to worry about running out of inventory. You don't have to guesstimate every month how many books you need to buy to have them on hand. That is all taken care of. Last but not least, white label shipping. So I love this opportunity for uh, for businesses, for authors, because you're really able to kind of take your authorship to the next level. You have complete brand continuity. So if you are establishing your own publishing imprint with white label shipping, your brand is on it, your author name is on it. No one knows you know, that Lulu is in the background fulfilling your books. It is completely a white label service. And so I think that depending on kind of your goals for your brand, it can really just help elevate and, and help you with the brand continuity. I mean, it's just a really nice presentation when your readers get the books and it has your branding on it. All right, and last but not least, the print API. So if you are a little bit more tech savvy, if you have a coder on staff, if maybe you've already built out an e-commerce um, interface for your website, you can plug into our print API, which will give you all of the benefits that I just mentioned. And you can use this um, you know, for enterprise clients if you want. We have a lot of larger businesses that will use the API, but it's just easy book printing and fulfillment from your website. Works very similarly to our Lulu Direct options, but with this one, you would just have to take care of the e-commerce and the transaction stuff on your own. Whereas with WooCommerce and Shopify, those can be built in. All right, my favorite slide every single time, Lulu in the wild. So now is the time of the show where I give you examples of uh, some Lulu books that were created um, and the way that our authors and our entrepreneurs, our content entrepreneurs are using them. Folks who had content on hand and then turned them into books, we're showing it to you now. All right, so first up, Clever Girl Finance. So Clever Girl fi Finance is a website uh, that is dedicated all to financial freedom. So helping people get their finances in order, understand the value of budgeting, what that means, how they can apply it, how to get out of debt, all of those things. So as you can see, she's writing articles, she's got a podcast, um, you know, they've got a course that they're selling. And she also has traditionally published books. So I really like to use this example because she used her expertise, which is in finance and helping people achieve financial freedom. And then she was able to publish a book out, you know, with traditionally with that content. And then she didn't stop there. She's a boss. So she made these planners. So low or no content publishing here where people can um, accompany these with the book that she published, accompany these with the course that she created, even take notes from her podcast or the articles that she's writing and stay on track. So we've got the business planner and the life planner. You're able to take these, get the most out of her content, and obviously benefit the reader and her audience by helping them stay on track and achieve financial freedom. So I think this is such a great example of someone who is really in tune with the content they're creating. They knew they know what their audience is looking for, and then just giving them more opportunities to interact with it. I mean, she's really doing it all. All right, next up is Darren Smith of Craftsman Creative. <clears throat> so Craftsman Creative is all about create, help, helping creators monetize their business. So this is information that Darren was sharing through his website, through speaking engagements, um, and through other efforts with his company. He decided to publish it in a book. So maybe you don't want to subscribe to his newsletter. Maybe you don't want to have to look at his Instagram or his Twitter or his social media every day. Maybe you don't want to have to read the articles. Maybe you just want the book and you can work through it on your own time. That is what Darren is offering here. So I also think, I, I love this example because I think he's doing something really clever with buy two copies of Craftsman Creative and get a first edition NFT. So maybe you've heard, you know, NFTs and Web3, a lot of chit chat about that uh, these days. So Darren is doing something really cool with partnering print, uh, the print book, the tangible and the physical with the NFT. So another wonderful example there. All right, so I, I've teased out Tika the Icky a little bit. I promised I would come back to her. So if you don't know what you're looking at, <laughs> this is perhaps the most fashionable dog on the internet. So Tika the Icky is an Italian greyhound, has a wardrobe that puts all of us to shame. So uh, her followers are humans uh, that have over a million followers on Instagram. This dog has been on the Drew Barrymore show. It's been on the red carpet. It stayed in hotels I could only dream about. 
So it's, it's living its best life to the fullest. So they've done a couple great things with this content. So I mentioned earlier and I showed the example of the calendar. So uh, the past couple of years, they will compile their most liked uh, photos that they posted on social media and put them into an amazing calendar for a keepsake for their followers and fans. And they'll also, uh, they also turned that content into a book. So they made this beautiful children's book about Tika and her fun, fashionable adventures. So I wanted to share this example because they were able to monetize their content, but also add a lot of value to their followers. I mean, the people who follow this dog, any pet influencer online, if you've seen them, people go crazy for a cute pet. So they're just giving their audience, they're, they're delighting them with these other opportunities to interact with their content and take a piece of Iggy Tika home. <laughs> all right. So for all of my fiction writers out here, I wanted to share this example um, from Walker Ryan. So I think this is a really cool one. Walker Ryan is a professional skateboarder. He published a novel on Lulu. So He's skateboarding. If you look at, so this is just a screenshot from his Instagram. Um, you know, it's all skateboarding, as you may have guessed. So those are all that his Instagram is. But, you know, people obviously come to him from for that information. Um, he's been a pro skateboarder. So he has a lot of knowledge about what that's like, what that culture is like in that lifestyle. So he was able to write a book about growing up in, in San Francisco um, and was able to write this fiction novel about this guy kind of living this life, becoming a professional skateboarder and going through life in San Francisco during that time. Um, so he was able to take, you know, his real world expertise and turn it into a fiction book. So I also kind of wanted to put this example out here just to let anyone know if you're thinking, well, you know, maybe I don't have the content for a nonfiction book. This can also be applied to fiction as well. So again, what are you, what do you know? You know, there's kind of that classic, that classic piece of advice, start with what you know. So with Walker Ryan, he knows skateboarding. He was able to make a really great um, fiction novel about that. All right. So those are some examples. Run the whole game, but we're coming up to the end of it. And I will open it up for questions in a minute. So go ahead and drop them into the Q&A if you haven't already. <clears throat> but how can you get started? So I've, I've, talk to you about why books. I'm talking to you about the content that you have on hand that you can turn into a book. But still, one of my favorite quotes about publishing is you don't know what you don't know because you think, oh yeah, I'm going to write the book. But then what? There's so much more that goes into it than actually putting pen or cursor to paper, if you will. So I wanted to give you kind of a quick and dirty on how to get started. So five steps to publish, print, and prosper to kind of close this out before we get to the questions. So Choose what content to publish. We talked today about all the different forms I could take. You know, are you publishing a coffee table book? Will this be a cookbook? Is it a calendar? Um, will it be a novel? What are you going to publish? That's step one. <laughs> what will that content be? So once you have an idea and you understand what you're going to publish, what that content is, then you can decide what trim size is going to be best for you. So obviously for a calendar, you know, eight and a half by 11 coil bound. Pretty good. Pretty good there. Or 11 by eight and a half. Um, so if you are publishing a novel, a six by nine is the most popular trim size for novels. Um, a coffee table book, maybe that landscape 11 uh, by eight and a half. So looking into the content you're going to publish, looking at other books that are similar, what do they look like? Do you want to be in line with that? Do you want to try something a little bit different and buck trends? So understand that. If you're working with Lulu, and we hope that you are, uh, then you can put in your trim size and download your interior and cover file templates from our book pricing calculator. And that's a great way to get started. Format and format interior and design cover files. So once you have everything together, format your interior. I talked about how important it is to be editing, formatting, and getting a cover designer. Um, I'll also share that we do have some some resources on on our Lulu U uh, channel, Lulu University. So go to our YouTube channel, subscribe if you haven't already. We have a, a video on building your publishing dream team that kind of walks you through how to make sure that you've got everything that you need to make a beautiful book and what that team might look like for you. All right, then upload to Lulu and order a proof. I didn't spend a lot of time on proof copies today, but that is so, so important. I did tell you that your book is an, is an extension of your brand. So it is hugely important that you order a proof copy and make sure that all the T's are crossed, all the I's are dotted. You thank your mom, you you know have that, <laughs> don't have something in between your teeth and your author photo, whatever. So you, no matter how many times you go through it, you have to have that proof copy in your hand to review before you let people or invite people to buy your book. And then go live on your website. Yay. So I talked about that. 
whether you're selling through Lulu Direct, whether you are ordering your books in bulk and hand fulfilling, maybe selling out, sending out signed copies. Once you're ready to go, make sure you're ready to go. All right. So here are some free sources for you. So I <clears throat> had mentioned Lulu University. If you go to YouTube and search that, uh, we would be grateful for you to like and subscribe while you're there. Um, also, our blog, we have a fantastic blog updated regularly all the time. So definitely check that out. The Lulu Knowledge Base, help.lulu.com. If you do need help, we have a great support team. They'll be happy to answer any questions that you have. But right now, I'm going to answer some questions that you have. So um, the last thing I will mention, follow us on social media. We're at lulu.com. Webinars.lulu.com is our website. So if you enjoyed this, if you um, would like to hear of upcoming webinars that we have, you can also choose to auto subscribe when you register so that every one that we have, you can, uh, you'll be automatically registered for. You don't have to attend if you don't want to, but you do have that option to be auto subscribe. Um, and you can stay up to date with our, our upcoming webinars and the previous one by heading to that landing page. All right. Um, I'm going to go through some questions. So I'll start in the chat portion. I see some of y'all dropped some questions in there. So we'll get started. All right. So Dave is asked, well, Alice said webinar jam, question mark, webinar jam, period. That is what we use. Uh, all right. So Dave said, can you recommend a YouTube or other source to help me with setting up margins? Yes. So we do have, uh, I think, a, a webinar on formatting that we did um, that we really walked through how to set your margins and what that looks like. So I would recommend checking that out. If you go to um, our YouTube channel and just look for our webinars, I think it's called Fun with Formatting. Really got creative with that one, uh, with that title. Um, so yeah, if you want to check that out, we walk you through how to set up your, I think it's in Microsoft Word, the way that we do this. That is where I would start. If you look at our blog, we may also have some blog um, articles about formatting that might be helpful for you as well. So thank you for that question, Dave. All right, Stacy, can you touch on ISBNs? I have items on Lulu on demand, but want to take it to the published level. Okay, so I can talk to you about ISBNs. Um, I'm not exactly sure if you want to drop in some clarification about what I want to take it to the published level means, but for ISBNs, essentially, your ISBN is all of your metadata and it describes your book to so the trim size, who published it, when it was published, all of that stuff. So it's really up to you if you want an ISBN or not. The important thing to think about is, do you want your book to be available for retail distribution? Retailers are going to require a barcode in an ISBN. So if that is something that you want, you want your book to be picked up by bookstores, you want it to be available for you know um, distribution through Amazon, um, through Ingram, they're going to require that ISBN. So even at Lulu, if you want to go through global distribution, you have to have an ISBN. However, if you choose to sell through the Lulu.com bookstore, you don't need one. If you want to sell through any of our Lulu Direct options, you don't need an ISBN. You can just sell that book without one. So again, I, I would say, Stacey, I would just ask about, yeah, okay, so they say it's not a real book without an ISBN. Well, I mean, it is and it's not. I, I guess it depends on who you're selling it to. But if you do want to go through retail distribution, buying an ISBN is a good idea. At Lulu, we also give them away for free. The thing to know there is if you take a free ISBN from Lulu, it will say in the metadata that it is published by Lulu Press. Maybe that matters to you and maybe it doesn't. Um, for a lot of people, it doesn't matter. You know, you're publishing it and with the ISBN, you're getting kind of what you need out of having an ISBN. So take it for free, not a big deal. However, if you want to um, have your own imprint in your in your metadata, if you want to publish a series of books, maybe if you're really just thinking about that brand continuity, buying a block of ISBNs from Bowker might be the way to go because you can set up your own metadata. And so, for instance, if, if Stacey, you want to um, publish several books or publish the work of others under your own imprint, you buy the block from, I, from Bowker, you can put in, you know, Stacey Publishing Co. I'm sure you could come up with something better than that. But um, that way, when people type in that ISBN and pull it up, they're seeing your um, publishing imprint on it. All right, Raymond. Hey, Raymond, how are you today? Um, all right, I am almost finished with my written book. It's Family Stories, basically. Oh, thank you for letting us know. That's really exciting. Raymond, I know that you and I have been in touch, so if I can help you along the way, let me know, and congratulations. All right, Laurie, what stage of doneness do you bring in the professionals? Oh, that's a, that's a great question, Laurie. So, there are going to be different kind of um, benchmarks for different professionals that you want to bring in. So I was watching a David Sedaris masterclass not too long ago, and he says that he does like 20 to 30 edits or revisions on his own work before he passes it along to his editor. 
So of course he's working on a lot of short stories, um, but I would say you want to edit it. You want to get it as close as you can. Like, let me rephrase this. You want to get it as far along the road as you can before you have to pass it off to somebody else. So maybe for, and this is for editing specifically. So uh, we have a lot of videos um, and blog posts on how to edit your own work. Um, the Fictionary is another platform that you can uh, look into that'll really help you with editing your own work to make sure your story is really strong. And once you've edited it as much as you can, once you've done everything you can, you can't see any ways to make it better. That's when you want to bring in the editor, I would say. Um, and also it kind of depends on your budget because obviously the more they have to edit and work on it, then the more you're going to have to pay. For formatting, once all the editing is done, that's when you will bring in the formatter. And for your cover design, you can start working with them. You know, as soon as you know what the book is about and it's pretty much done, you can kind of do the, the book cover piece with the editing and formatting as long as there's not like some crazy plot twist that comes out of editing um, that may change kind of the vibe you're going for on the cover. But then you can start working with your cover designer, explaining to them what the book is about, um, explaining to them the feelings or emotions you want the cover to evoke. So there are kind of different uh, benchmarks for each one of those, but that's a great question. And I hope that uh, I hope that, that that answered it. Chris says editing is like peeling an onion, a huge onion. Absolutely. All right. Thank you guys very much. I'll go in the Q&A tab. Um, oh, I said webinar jam. Yes, still webinar jam. <laughs> all right. Is it possible to publish with you and not to sell with you, but get all the copies? Absolutely. So when you go through Lulu's Publishing Wizard, and again, we have videos on this as well. I think it's just Lulu's publishing steps and Lulu's print steps, maybe the names of the videos. If you want to publish and just get print copies of your book and you don't want it to be for sale on Lulu, you don't want it, you know, you want to take it from Lulu, our relationship will end there for that, for that meeting. And then you want to do whatever you want with the print books. Yes. You just upload your project to Lulu. Um, you can go, you go a different path through our wizard. You just indicate, I'm like, I think it's the first page. I want to print my book. So don't click on distribution or I want to sell it. Your intent is to print the book. And you can just kind of go through a fast track to print the book. And then you can do, you know, as you please with those books. So, yes, we can do that. All right. Uh, so Chris is saying Lulu Direct is a couple of dollars more than the other printing I'm used to using. Is the quality of the book reflected of the investment? Of course, of course, of course it is, Chris. <laughs> but that's a great question. And it depends on the book that you're looking at, the book that you're creating, and whoever you're using before. So I would just recommend ordering a proof copy. So before you go through Lulu Direct, before you get your e-commerce plugin set up, you can go to Lulu, just like Alice's question, and print one copy of the book. See, hey, this is exactly what I'm expecting. Or no, this is different. These options aren't what I'm looking for, whatever. I mean, you have to kind of do your research there. But I mean, we have a, a, a really high um, QA testing process. We are all constantly kind of secret shopping our printers to make sure they're upholding the standards that we've set. Um, we're really, really proud of the books that we've made. So I would say absolutely it's worth the investment. Um, but I would also just encourage you to try it. Try it. Order a book from, from our bookstore or upload your files and test them out and see if it does match your expectations. And you have to decide if that's worth the investment for you, but I would encourage you to do so and say that it that it would be. And also with Lulu Direct, if you're using that, I think the opportunities that come along with it really justify any investment that you're making in it. So getting the transactional data, being able to automate the print fulfillment, being able to grow your business, I think that all of those definitely make it worth it. And thank you for that question. Cheryl, any chance you will offer leather bound? Maybe, I don't know. Maybe we could we could try that. I think uh, I don't think there's any uh, plan for it right now. However, our our audience tells us what to do. We are you know you guys are our boss. So if that's something that you really want, let us know. Um, you know, continue to to comment on that or or send us the, that information if that's something that you find very important, and we will see if we can add it to the lineup. All right, let's see. Uh, hey, Chris. Hey, Chris. How are you? All right. I uploaded the final draft of The Glass Planet and lost the notes on getting the proof copy. Can you forward it to me? Um, the notes on getting the proof copy. Oh, yes. So I understand what you're saying. Yeah. So I think what you're asking is just what is the process of if you go through the proof and you like it, then here's what you do. So at Lulu, our process, especially for global distribution, we mandate that you order a proof copy. Once you get your proof copy, I mean, and you should always, but for global distribution, you have to. So um, once you get your proof copy, you will have the opportunity within your Lulu account to click approve proof. Um, and then it will just kind of, 
talk to the races. We'll send it through our global distribution channels. If you selected that, it's good to go. You can make it available for sale. Um, or you can edit the proof or um, I can't remember the exact wording, but essentially if you need revise, I think it's revised. So you can also click the option to revise the proof if you need to make any changes. Um, and then you kind of go down that path of editing whatever or, or making those changes and then going through and going through the proof process again. All right, let's see if we have any other questions. All right. <laughs> Oh, Chris, so you're saying, <laughs> I didn't see the stick, I didn't see the punchline, I guess. I was just thinking that editing is like peeling an onion because it just takes forever and every layer there's like more that you will come across. But you're also saying that it makes you cry. So yeah, that too. All right, so Jeff is saying, can you please give a guide to cost? Yes. So what I'm going to do is link to, so one of my favorite tools at Lulu is our pricing calculator. So I'm going to drop a link in the chat to our book pricing calculator. I think you should all be able to see that. So yes, if you go to um, if you go to our price calculator, you can put in the specifications of your book. So you put in the trim size, the page count, you can pick your paper weight, uh, paper color, the um, binding type that you may need, whatever, all the specifications for the book that you have in mind, your dream book, and then we'll give you the per unit cost. So this is also where you can go to get templates for that book. You can download your interior file and cover file templates in a couple of different formats like Microsoft Word, uh, Photoshop, things like that. If you're working with a designer, that will be very important to give them the right trim sizes. Um, but that's where you can get that. So I, I love this tool. It'll also show you how much you can make per sale through um, selling through the Lulu bookstore versus global distribution versus um, uh, Lulu Direct. So we'll give you all that price breakdown. So was it Chris? Were you asking about Lulu Direct? Yeah. So if you are asking about pricing for that, that's also a great tool for you to just see um, what each of these avenues will will end up costing you and what that will look like for your bottom line. So thank you for that question, Jeff. All right. Jason, copies from Lulu are very good. Support from Lulu is very good also. Thank you. I will say I had a friend that was publishing um, some coloring books on Lulu, and he did let me know that he had uh, I think his order maybe got lost in the mail or something like that. He contacted support and they had another one to him the next day. That was very exciting to hear. I didn't prompt him. I had no idea that this problem went on. So I was not involved. So yeah, our, our support team really goes above and beyond and does everything they can to make sure that our authors are successful. So don't hesitate to reach out. All right. And Chris is saying, is anyone familiar with the New York Review of Books? A magazine publishes 20 copies a year and has something called an IPL. I do not know of the New York Review of Books, but if anyone else does, please feel free to hop in the chat. Um, but if you are looking for a review or if you need reviews, there's several different platforms out there that you can pay to review your book. Um, but also, you know, if you are publishing content that you already have and you kind of if you have a following or an audience, you know, again, going back to that posi positioning statement I shared if you already know your audience or if you have a good idea of who that is, then as soon as you start working on the book or you know what it's going to be about, you can start getting them involved, asking for their feedback. And when the book is ready to launch, then hopefully those folks will feel invested and excited about it and will offer to review it or to help you with your launch plan. Um, and I'm just going to actually drop a link to our YouTube channel in here as well. And while I'm doing this, I will do a last call for questions. Um, if anyone else has one. So I'll drop this in here. This is where you can find uh, information, like all, all of our webinars we post to our YouTube channel. So you can drop this in here. Okay. Um, yeah, Chris, I'm sorry. I don't really have any information on them, but that's a great, like look online for reviews because if they're bad, somebody's talking about it. So you can definitely kind of uh, figure that out pretty quickly, usually if it's like super scammy. Um, but Chanticleer, Blue Ink, um, if you actually look on our partners page, lulu.com slash partners, I'll drop that in here too. Dot com slash partners. Um, then we can see some review options too. Uh, Dave, does the cost calculator ask for word count? No, so we just go by page count. Um, and I know that whenever, like, depending on what stage you're at with the book, if you, especially if you haven't formatted it yet, because that can make things shift or change, then you're, it can be a guess. 
Um, but this will give you a really good estimate if you do have an idea of the word count or the page count, or even if you don't yet, it'll still kind of give you those benchmarks so you know if you end up writing a 250 page book, what that cost will be. Yeah, blue ink and clarion, or yeah, great, perfect. Well, I'm glad to hear that. Okay, all right, everybody, last call for questions. Um, thank you all, yes, clarion, thank you all for, for hanging out with me today, for spending some time. I hope that this was helpful. Um, I hope that you're walking away with some ideas of content that you have and the already uh, thinking about the beautiful books that they could take shape as. Um, and also, I had a fun fact that I was going to start this with that has nothing to do with anything that we talked about. But um, did you guys know that dolphins sleep with one eye open? <laughs> it's true. <laughs> it's true. Look it up. So I'll end you with that on your Wednesday. <laughs> Something fun to think about. Um, let's see. Oh, Dave, that's about page count. If you go from eight and a half to 11, six by nine. Oh, I don't know, Dave. That'll definitely. Well, what you could do is just change the page size. And if you're using Microsoft Word, change it to whatever, you know, going between one or the other and see what that ends up as. Um, and then, I mean, Microsoft Word, if you put it as an eight and a half by 11, if you are using Microsoft Word, then exporting that to a PDF it's not going to shift too much. I mean, it's kind of like the best way to do it. That's why we only accept PDFs because there's not as much movement. So I would just recommend using whatever document you have or your manuscript, however you're creating it, play around with the margins and the trim size, and then you'll be able to get a better idea of what the final page count might be. All right, everybody. I think that that is it. Thank you so much for joining me. Again, this recording will go out to everyone who registered. It'll also be on our YouTube channel. I hope to see you for the next one. Have a fantastic day. Thank you so much, and I'll see you next time. Bye, everybody.